Okay, let's start. All right, yeah, good evening. So, quick one. My name is Deji, actually. So, uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. What can you see? Um. Okay, all right. So, we'll just carry on. So, uh, a quick intro, introduction about the academy. I'll, I'll do a quick ro um, recap on where we are and how this academy started. So, I'll talk about the course. I'll talk about the minor testing crash course also. A brief intro on a brief intro on the um, tutors and also some testimonies course of the training don't be scared it's free so I'll point that out right now but yeah if you are to do it other places how much are you going to get um, how much are they going to charge you for that so then careers advice content of the Content and materials, structure of this particular training, your expectation, internship and mentoring, communication certificates that are attainable, examination and also continuous feedback and loops. So, Some people say they can't hear anything. Okay, if you cannot hear, I will advise you log out and log in again. So sometimes it does happen. We got a lot of people on the call. So one thing I want to say is like this particular two I've not tried on more than 30 people. So and we cannot have 100 people on 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 the training. So but for this particular one, I know it's going to be less less people so but i'm looking to test other tools so i'm uh, open to uh, suggestions on the tool that could be used for this webinar so but as it is right now so we're going to use this tool for now for today so bear bear with me and so after the call so if you have if you've ever used any tool before and you think we, it can be used, let, send a, a message to me and so we can actually review them. So, yeah, about the academy. So, uh, we started different training from from the church, so this academy is, is a branch, I would say, or initiative of the RCCG City of God in Crayford. Uh, the name of our pastor is Pastor Tutu Shofora, and also Pastor Tunde Shofora. So I kind of anchor this training, but yeah, and I've done several trainings before. So and it's in it's an initi initiative by the church to actually help the community. It started in the UK. I know some people kind of register all over the the world, but the focus was basically the UK guys. So apologies for other people that register from different parts of the of the world. But yeah, so we are based in the UK. So bear bear with us. And I said we've done a lot of trainings. Some of them are informal, some of them are formal. So uh, I would say this is kind of the second one we're going to do formally, I would say. Aside from that, we've done other informal trainings, different things, and we're going to do more. So uh, like I said, that back of this particular training, feedback is very, very important to, to how this is going to, to be. So please do that. So the name of the academy is called Blue Sky Academy. So it, like I said, it's a initiative of RCCG, the City of God in Crayford and in the UK. About the course. So it's, like I said, it's intensive. It's very, very intensive. It's an intensive software training. 
So you won't actually get it in most of the conventional training courses that you, you will have done. Uh, we just finished one, so you can get feedback from the people that were in the C-sharp one. So I would say it's kind of three um, month in intensive course. So if you don't have enough time, if you haven't got enough time planned for, for this particular training, I think it's okay for you to leave the group. It's going to be very, very intensive. It's going to be very hands-on. You need to have at least six or seven hours every week to, the, to, to actually uh, get something out of the training. So, yeah. We did one for C Sharp uh, with Specflow. This is going to be for uh, Java and Cucumber. If you don't know anything about Java, it's okay for now, but I would advise you uh, have a crash course in Java, to be honest. But I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Like I said, as simple as possible, but it's not going to be that simple later. So I've got some feedback thing. Oh, DG, it seems simple when you're teaching it, but when you're working on it, it's not that simple. Yeah, I get it. But you need to know that you need time to practice. You need time to work on that also. As mentioned, our feedback is very, very important. When we tried the first one, it was basically automation testing using C Sharp without any manual testing. So people register without having knowledge of any testing. So then it was kind of, they had to go through some crash course. So this is kind of feedback from there. So right now we have two weeks of kind of a crash course on manual testing. So for some trainings, you only have maybe one, you have one month of manual testing course. So but as it is right now, manual testing is not, kind of invoke again. So if you are joining the party as a manual tester, I think you are joining very late. So that's why I don't focus on manual testing so much. But however, you need to have, uh, you need to know how to do manual testing. So that's why we kind of plan the two weeks intensive um, manual testing crash course. So I would advise that you you stayed on on that and make use of that opportunity if you have if you don't have any experience in testing because for you to even be successful in automation testing you need to have knowledge of manual testing uh, i believe so that is that i've posted a book on the whatsapp group we're going to use that for the manual testing so and so please uh, read that book so okay about the tutors like i said my name is deji i would you can google or you can check me on linkedin I've got more than 15 or 18 years experience doing this actually professionally, I would say. I've worked with the likes of Gazprom, HSBC, just using me work at one of the European banks right now. So, and also with me, also is Pat, also has got almost like 10 years experience also in of the testing working for different banks also and also different publishing companies so you can actually look up on on linkedin and see the profile and also uh, sorry i get this one so software shouldn't be and also it's also assisting us also so and so i'll, I'll give you a testimony about software later so and it, it really challenges me to be honest. So, okay. Then also Pastor Tunde, uh, like I told you, we run different courses. So he also is a Oracle uh, consultant. So, and he's also a pastor of the church. So I would say he's my mentor. I saw him doing that. So, and I take that up also. So to actually train people, he believes in empowering people and that is the 
thesis academies offshoot from there. So, and I can say kudos to him for doing that. So, he's going to go through Oracle to other people, but that is going to be a different training entirely. So, and I've got uh, Kemi Shudeke and also Boye Shudeke. So, uh, Kemi is going to go through uh, Excel, as simple as it, for as a an IT person, you need to have knowledge of Excel for people that actually want it. So even it's kind of introduction, but it's going to, yeah. So it's going to go through that, but that will be after this particular um, training. So, and also, Boye Shodeke also is going to go through database with us. So, and yeah, also useful as Can I ask everyone also to make sure they are mute? I kind of try mute everybody. Someone people is also changing that status, but to make it, everything is quiet. So make sure you are mute so that everyone enjoys this particular session. Thank you. So, so yeah, that is that. Testimonies. Uh, like I said, I've, I've trained a lot of people. In, in that in different parts so and um, I can say 80% of them actually get a job uh, that's one of the uh, reason we formed the Academy so for the last time the last we did one for C sharp so it's just finished so I got all that testimony from that is a big uh, class so I've seen some people changing job from manual testing to automation I've got testimony of someone actually get a job. So I've got like kind of confidence level increased from, oh, uh, I don't know how to do testing now. I can actually know how to do testing in my particular role. I've got that testimony also. And yeah, people now kind of go into job search knowing that they know what exactly they can do in that test regard. So, so the cost of the training, like I said, is free. But if you are to go out and do this in an academy, uh, I would say for manual testing, you will get roughly like three to 500. And also for automation, you get around it, around the maybe minimum you get 500. However, it doesn't stop at that because this is kind of not only training we do, we do also mentorship and also internship. And I would want to point out that uh, internship and mentoring is not for everyone. So it's kind of, you have to apply for it. Uh, you have to show your seriousness towards that. And you have to commit to the time that you you need for that particular purpose. So it's very, very important. So having done that, we don't leave you like that. We also do career advice. So, and to actually know that, okay, when you want to go for a job interviews, how to do that. And that's why I want, I will say you need to, if you're in the UK, please do come for the workshop. So workshop is a place that we meet face to face. This is online. So face to face, we do like a mock interviews at the workshop. We also make sure your environment is set up at the workshop. It's kind of very, very intense. And also it's very, very important for you to attend the workshop. It's on the 30th of June, three zero. So, okay. Now, content and materials. So, there will be some materials that will be sent out. So, there will be video for, if you miss any class, I will say, but I will say, don't, don't miss it because you get to ask questions and I get to answer them if I can. So, 
there will be some other materials that will be posted. I've just posted one about the uh, manual testing and also the book I posted. So, and also the WhatsApp group is very, very helpful. Post your comment there. People are going to answer them. I've got a mix of experience in the WhatsApp group. Some people have got more than a um, lot of experience even. And so don't post your question directly to me in terms of my personal uh, WhatsApp message. Don't, don't do that. Post your question in the group. So because if you post it directly to me, you might not get your answer instantly. But if you post it into the group, then people will be able to answer. And I do read them also. If it's spot on, I can do comment. But sometimes it's like if it's if, if something I need to clarify, I will do that and I'll clarify. So, but yeah, you see some people responding very well, so and which is good. So we kind of build a community around that area. So in this ecosystem, just to be sure that okay. People communi communicate, you get a network that if you have any issues at work or you're going for interviews or you don't know what to do about this job and everything. So you, that's a community for you to, to rely on so that you can answer your questions. Structure. Like I said, it's going to be manual and manual testing starts even in an hour. So by, uh, I'll finish this intro in, in the next 20 or 30 minutes. So we start in manual testing. So that is going to take like five sections. A session is one hour. So it's going to one session today and it's going to be, yeah. So two sessions next week. So then of course there'll be lots of manual testing also within the automation testing, but but the crash course for the manual testing we're going to be covered before we start the automation. So then after that, we move into a quick intro to automation and also Cucumba, Java. We talk about page objects. I don't want to bore you on, on those ones, but so on, on the website, you got all everything listed in there as in terms of the content that we we are going to cover. So and your expectation, I would, yeah. As time goes on, I think it's it's good to send that across to measure your expectation if you are meeting them or not, and also to provide feedback on how we are doing. And so now talking about internship, this is very very important, and to be honest, it's here to me. So. Uh, the last time we did for the C-Sharp, internship starts uh, after the four or five sessions. But this time around, after the second sessions, I think after the, or before the workshop, we I'll send the application for the internship out. So it's going to be three or uh, two months internship, which is going to be you get to practice what you've learned and you get to practice it on a real product or real application and you got to practice what you've done even at work. So it's very, very intense. So if you haven't got at least five hours in a week, please don't apply. Don't apply for the internship if you haven't got like five hours every week. So that also goes for for the mentoring. So, uh, uh, so the same thing also goes for the mentoring, and so we have some mentoring program. Also, you need you need time. You need to commit time to race. So it's very very important. So communication is key. 
to be honest, communication is very, very key. So use the WhatsApp group to communicate your questions. Like I said, don't send it to me. So it's, it's not. So certificates. So at the end of the uh, course, there will be certificate given for those people that are contributed and also we think are worthy of the certificate. So, and there will be examination also. And also if you pass the exam, you get certificates and everything. So, and yeah, continuous feedback and is very, very important. So, so yeah, that is that so and so that's that's a, that's the expectation about about the course so it's kind of a quick intro about what's going to happen so we're going to go on this journey for the next three months together so uh it's going to be challenging i promise but i'll try to make it light i will have fun together on the journey so for uh, in most in the most important parts that be committed as very very important for everyone to be committed to it so that you don't waste your time you don't waste my time you don't waste tutors time you don't waste even the academy's time even though it's free your time is not free my time is not free so let's use it uh, very well it's time is money so it's very very important I can't actually stress it and um, on that note, I wouldn't want to take much of the time, so I'll just leave the floor open for any question. If you have any question, it's time to ask now. Then in 15 minutes time, we study manual testing. So then also those ones that have done, have got experience in manual testing can log out from, from this training because it's going to be boring for you, to be honest. So. Okay, any question? So, for in essence, I think most of us, we've done manual testing one way or the other. Might not be as a professional, but it might be ad hoc, or, but I believe we've done manual testing. We've done sort of testing or the other. So this trend is to open your eyes to some of the testing that you've done, and also to use that even to encourage you and also to also teach you about how testing is done professionally and to also go through this particular test book. So like I said, in normal training course, manual testing, you will have like one month to go through that. Maybe you have like eight different um, the days or eight hours to go through that, but we're going to try to compress everything so so that we start the automation. So having said that, then what is testing? What exactly is testing? So and. If I say we've done testing before, which type of testing have we done? Literally, just to take it like a literal person, I tell people, everyone, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do is testing. The first thing that you do is testing because you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes. You try to check, can you see? So that is you testing based on the requirements that the creator has specified that your eyes should be able to see. So if you open your eyes, you couldn't see anything. Then what happened? You send an alarm 
like maybe you you call 999 or let's say you wake up in the morning you couldn't raise your arm or your leg is not working or your heart starts to misfunction it becomes an issue then okay uh, someone say cannot see the screen so is that applicable to only one person or to everyone as i was saying before if you wake up in the morning and you couldn't raise your leg your heart is malfunctioning or you couldn't see so then what do you do you raise an alarm so in testing that's what you call a defect you raise a defect but how, what do you raise a defect on you raise a defect on a requirement and the same way also when you wake up you raise your leg you know how your leg should work you know how your arms should work you know how your eyes should work you have that requirement in your edge so basically you are measuring the functionality of your body based on that requirement and then you are also testing that it works properly so technically what you are doing it, it's testing it may not be software testing but you're actually testing and you are testing based on requirement so then let's flip in it right now and talk about software testing having got that transferable skills that we know that we do a bit of testing as as a person and now let's do if you have um you bought a new iPhone or a new Samsung phone and now uh, most people that got a new phone would not just use it like that they first confirm that it meets their requirements the first thing you check when the phone comes I've not I've not seen someone that actually get a phone and quickly I said let me make calls unless you are in an emergency you just get that phone and you want to make call quickly even with that also you still have a requirement you need if you open the phone it hasn't got any button then you raise an alarm so when you open a phone on your the package the first thing you check is it the phone i ordered for for instance if you order for an iphone and you got a samsung phone in in the in the post that in itself is is a bug because that's not what you ordered for that's not what you're expecting so moving on from that you open the phone you see okay it's an iphone and then you check the keypad oh it's got a keypad no it's, uh, no wow i ordered for a touch screen but i got a phone with a keypad that's a bug okay moving on okay it's a touch screen and then you try to see can i actually browse as it got some app in there and everything so both of these things you test and uh, before you start okay let me make up i want to call a friend just to show that okay i can hear someone everything is fine so more often we we do that knowingly or unknowingly so in that regard it's another form of testing that we are doing and in essence I, I can actually categorize that part of testing as a user acceptance testing like you as a user for you to accept that particular product you need to test it and you have a requirement at the back of your end, uh, mind to say this is what I'm expecting this appli um, application or this product to do and then you are actually trying to verify that that particular product or application does what you are expecting so and you might not do it professionally but you might do it like a normal user so that but literally what you are doing is is user acceptance testing but now 
this training is to now help you to be able to do it professionally, to move from that adopt way of approach and to now have a structured way of doing testing. And so it's kind of so basic. So to see, okay, now we move gradually from one level of testing to the other. And also we see different process that you follow. Uh, how do you follow those process? When you talk about testing, what do you consider? And also when you are raising bulk, what is bulk? What is different? And what do you clarify them? And even what is a failure? And all these things go, they go together. So those ones are to what we are going to cover in the in 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 this particular training, and also we are going to cover the techniques that you can use to test, which I would say maybe differentiate myself and yourself in the way you do your testing. Like I say, even if you do testing, so you may not do it professionally. You're not doing it the same way. You may not follow the same strategy that I follow at work. But this is now to actually teach you what you need to look into, how do you do testing professionally, and that that's the point. That is what our target and our goal is for this particular training. This book in front of you is what we're going to look through, and we're going to, I will just skim through, then I'll tell you some facts, but I'll advise you to read them and I'll pinpoint some areas that even if you have one hour to read which one do you need to to focus on but I would say read this particular book uh, cover cover to cover I would say so let's go into the book yeah the name of the book is software testing foundation and I mentioned about an exam that should be done so everyone in this particular class and the even automation testing should do this exam and without which there will not be certification <laughs> so i will repeat that maybe in, in the next class or when we start the automation even, or even at the workshop so Okay, we start from chapter two, I think. Okay. Fundamentals of testing. What are the fundamentals of testing? So I'll quickly go. Errors, defect, and bug. What's the defect? What's a failure and what's a fault? So these are three different things in testing. And first thing, let's talk about failure. Failure means requirement is not fulfilled at all. There's a discrepancy between what the actual behavior is and what the expected result is. But it now depends on where exactly you see that failure, I would say. So, and what is the difference between a failure, error, and a bug? Everything will start with an error, a woman error, someone misquote. So, yeah, everything will start with an human error. Someone maybe going for a coffee break and type what he was not supposed to type in the code or he made a mistake and this could easily be corrected. But eventually that goes into, into the code and then it developed into a bug. So it develops into a bug, it goes into the software, and also 
now it's not yet executed so it's maybe in production or in development actually so you as a QA or as a tester I'm now meant to improve the quality of that particular software you are meant to ensure that software meets the requirements but because there are bugs inside it so then you need to actually be able to find those bugs to be able to say it's the quality has improved but if you are not able to find that bug it goes into productions and then it becomes a failure then that means the company can lose money it can also cause crashes or even life may be at risk so you can see how a small error or mistake from people developed into a defect or bug and also then it goes to become a failure so where do you stand as a tester you stand in between the error and also the failure so to see that the error committed by developer doesn't become a failure so and that is what you need to be able to establish so testing terms well yeah we've talked about defects we've talked about bug and also what is debugging debugging is locating and also correcting defects uh tester don't debug developers do so you are as a tester you are meant to raise a bug you are meant to say this particular application is not functioning as it should function and also then that's where it stops developers take that and then they now try to look at where the problem is locate that issue and also now fix it or correct that particular bug and having done that they send back to you to retest so then you retest that bug and is it that is fixed or it's not if it's fixed it goes you continue testing other thing, you passed it but if it's not fixed it goes back to the developer again so so that process is called retesting uh, also when you also do your testing you also need to do a regression testing so which is means that you need to now test other parts of the application that could be affected to be sure nothing has regressed or the change has not caused any other parts to to fail so those are the things that the terms that we forgot, we, we've clarified right now so we, I've talked about debugging retesting and I've talked about regression testing so so the software testing are different purposes technically I said executing a program a program to find bug that is not the main purpose of testing I would say the main purpose is what is that you execute that program to measure quality but in the process of measuring the quality of that particular product you find failures you find bugs you find yeah and because of that you measure the quality of that product it helps you to improve it also improve or provide confidence to stakeholders then also you might need to do documentations to prevent future occurrence of that particular bug I wouldn't actually call it a failure to be honest I'll call it a bug I would say so so I'll quickly move to software quality so to be honest as a tester the main thing that you are going to be doing is contributing to the quality of an application
That's a question. Can we go over difference between a bug and a defect? Again, this is one of those questions developers do ask, to be honest, I would say. What's a defect? What's a bug? Uh, I think maybe you're talking about what's a failure? What's a, bu what's a bug? Technically, people classify defect and bug as the same thing, I would say. But let's not talk about defect or failure and uh, defect, yeah, defect and failure. What's different between a bug or a defect and failure? Like I said, I said bug and defect technically means the same thing. But if you want to now split it together and say, what exactly is the, these two terms? Are they different or is there any similarity in them? But they are kind of used in that one, I would say, together. But some people will classify a bug as this is, this application is not, uh, it's not working as required. It's not, it doesn't meet this specification. That technically is a bug. You raise a bug because there is a difference between the application and the requirements. I've listened to some developers that say, okay, yeah, that's okay. But then if you talk about a defect, what's a defect? They will not classify a defect as this application meets the requirement of the user, but however, there is, they now call it defect. There is an issue which is not specified in the requirement, but however, that is not making that application to go live. So technically, if that application does not align with what the requirement says, that is classified as a bug. But that the another defect is when the application meets the requirements, but however, it doesn't meet things that are not in the requirement. For me, I'll say both of them are the same thing. Whether you call it a bug, you call it a defect, they are actually mm, uh, different terminology to confuse maybe tester or QA. But if you am talking about now, what's the difference between the bug or defect and a failure? So this is what the difference is. When you talk about failure, this thing already passed the QA and is gone into production. It becomes a failure. The system has crashed. Like you got an application in your right now that has passed QA, it's been released, and then it fails in production, that becomes a failure. So then it's coming like, okay, now we need to mitigate risks, uh, company is losing money, some um, application we are losing trust or something like that. So, but that is a, is a difference. I hope I've been able to clarify that. So in terms of your role as a QA, you are meant to contribute to software quality. You are meant to contribute to software quality. But how do you contribute to, to them? You, can, you do that by identifying defects. You are not meant to correct them. You are not meant to actually fix the bugs. You are, not, you are meant to point them out to developers so that they can actually fix it. So, and in pointing out the defect, you have different documents that you base it on, which actually specify how the application should work. You take that document and you read them, you understand them. And then you take the application, you try to see if the application uh, behaves the same way as the requirement says. If it doesn't behave as the application, as the requirement says, then, and there is difference, you, you raise it as, as, a, as a bug. So that is when you 
contribute to, to the quality of the application. There are different ways, uh, different type of testing that you might need to do. We'll talk about that also even before we start the automation testing. So I just want to make this introduction as easy as possible and also to not talk about a lot of jargons that can make some people run away. But yeah, it's Is failure only measure after go live? I would say the answer is yes. So the system has to be failed in production. So it's basically after go live. What you get before go live is they are all bugs or if you call it a defect. But once that's why you don't want to have a failure. You don't want to fail actually. So because then it can be catastrophic. So after go live, what you get is no box. It's basically a failure. So they, you can come back and call it a bug again, but technically that's that's what is is a failure on its own. So so all right. So we go through all this. Uh, I, I, I would advise you read through this, to be honest. I don't have enough time to go through it. We're going to cover this in two hours or three hours. So I would advise you go through different things that are written there. So, so I think one I need to focus on is this one. Okay. Okay, fundamental test process. When I started, I, I actually said, most of us, we do testing, right? But we do it in different ways. So, but in most cases, we don't follow process. But that actually differentiates a professional tester and the non-professional one. So we're going to go through what are these processes that you need to follow so that you can be a professional tester. One, so, so that takes us back a bit to uh, software development lifecycle to see what are the different software development lifecycle that we have and to look into how things tie up, then we can now look at different uh, testing for each um, cycle. So the V model, V model is uh, the also waterfall. I think this is not talking about waterfall. The waterfall model, the also V model. So, and also there's also Agile also. So um, there is a session for Agile completely. So, and that we're going to talk about Agile and how uh, Agile framework actually work. So, but we'll, we'll look that into that. I think that's going to be in the next uh, two sessions to look into what is Agile um, framework and different frameworks that we have in Agile. So, but now let's talk about the process of developing life cycle. So the first thing you want to do is you, there's a conception of a system that you want to breed, you want to build. So there'll be gathering of the requirement for that particular system. So they, they are gathered together. You talk about what it needs to be done in that particular requirement. Then after that, you analyze that particular requirement and then you do your designing of the, uh, maybe um, you design what the application should do and it might be wireframes, it might be some uh, design or sketches and everything so that you may need to also put into place. 
Then after that, there'll be some coding to be done. Then after the coding is finished, there'll be testing. So in Vmodule, you do that on and on like that. But I think we're going to talk about Agile, which is one of the most favored or mostly used approach. So maybe in the next two lessons. So, but in terms of testing now, the first thing you do is you do your planning, right? So you do your planning, you do your analysis on design, you implement and you execute, and also you do your um, closure. So before now, when you want to test, you just most people will just go quickly into execution without having to do planning, without having to analyze it, without having to do design. You just quickly, like you bought a new laptop or you bought a new phone, what you, you will do is quickly you go into execution or what does this application do uh, or what exactly would this particular product do and you quickly want to test it and you execute your um, without even having any test case, without even having anything at all, no activities um, planned, so no design, nothing at all. But yeah, this particular te um, training is to now make you to follow structured approach to see that, okay, when you want to do testing, you just you don't just jump into it and there's a sort of process that you before. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Now, let's talk about the first one is test planning and control. During your test planning, you are meant to sit down and check what are the what do you want to test you need to have an objective of uh, can everyone meet themselves please um, okay so you are meant to have an objective what you want to achieve, what testing should be covered, what actually, to be honest, also what is actually testing, what are the features that you want to test, how do you want to test them, and also what are the features that you are not going to test, what is your entry criteria, what's your exit criteria, and you need to have those ones in place. You need to have a, a roadmap so to say, of how you're going to do those testing. So we're going to cover test management in, in great detail later. So everything, you need to administer them. You need to manage those ones. So you need to talk about the infrastructure that you need to put in place, you need to talk about the test strategy or approach, um, all those things also, but I think if time permits, we also talked about those ones. But you don't just start testing, basically. You, you need to see what are the activities that need to be planned. You need to plan them out. So, and also know what are your goals and everything. So, all these things need to be uh, uh, set out before you start testing. So then after that, you have your test analysis and your design. This is the area I would focus a lot of my effort on, to be honest. So we're going to have a whole session to, to address this because I think this is where you're, this is when you now have to now design what you need to, to do is based on your having to have your test basis, having to see how can I actually test them and also to see that 
can I even actually test them? Is it testable? If it's testable, what are the techniques I need to use? And how do I create my test cases? How do I do this? How do I do that? So all this is, they are very, very important. So we're going to go through different terminology. What is test cases? What is test strategy? What is test specification? Uh, test conditions so on in the next in the next um, section so maybe next week so those are very very important this is kind of like a v um, overview of everything that will make you a very good tester so now also you need to also have like a traceability i've tested this but i do i know in tomorrow which part of functionality is that? And also you need to have that, how do I design my test cases? What are the techniques to use? What are the input and output you know, criteria that I need to use? And also that this is also where you put all these things. So then also black box testing, what is black box testing? What is white box testing, I think? you might need to read them. So as, I'll quickly just say, uh, as, it, as the name implies, black box testing, it's another technique that you don't, it's like a black box. You don't see inside. It's, so you don't see anything inside. So most of the QA will fall into um, this, appro um, this particular part. So is you take the requirements, it's based on the requirements basically. You don't know what's happening in, in terms of the structure of the application. You take the requirements, the requirement is what you have, and you test based on, on the requirements or specification. Yeah. There's another one also, which is called white box testing. It basically is the opposite one also. You test based on the source code. You analyze the source code, you have access to the source code, and you can actually design your test cases based on what the test, um, what uh, actually is in the, in the code. So I think most most we will, will do black box testing because in, in that regard, you don't have access to the source code. So you only use the requirement and requirements is English, you read the requirement and you take the application, you then also verify if the application meets what the requirement says. So, so that's on the design, so We'll go through this in great details, how you do different type of um, test case, how you design different of test cases. For instance, if you have an application that accepts uh, even number from one to 10, uh, how do you test it? So, and already you know this application accepts even numbers, and it's also even number from one to 10. What do I need to provide what are those things that I do need to provide. So the non-professional -prof tester would, would say, oh, I've got an application that accepts even, uh, even numbers. Oh, I can put two, four, six, you try to do the same thing like that. That's not the right approach as a tester. There are techniques to use. So, and this, training is to equip you with those techniques to say you don't just do testing, you test based on approach and design techniques that is available. So and that that is the point of this of this particular testing. So I'm going to teach you some techniques that is being used for manual testing. Then also those testing those techniques <coughs> also will go through when we are actually doing the automation also is very, very important to, to get that. So, yeah, having done the tech, uh, the design, I'll say most of us, this is what we do, test implementation and execution. We don't do the other parts. We don't do the mm, test design. We don't do the analysis. We don't do the planning. So before now, 
we just go in there and implement and execute and that's it so but now things are going to change so now before we start to implement we already got everything we are already reaching our test cases then we can now follow those test cases uh, in the next session maybe next week we're going to write, write a simple test case and then we're going to now we take a project and we have a solution problem to solve and then we can now write a simple test case and then you can execute them so Okay, so I will. I want to for, um, finish this um, in the next 20 minutes. Yeah. So then, having done that, you need to do reporting. So for the ad hoc testers, of course, there will not be reporting. So, but if you're doing professionally, you need to report. But what do you report on? You need to report on your SD criteria. I'll talk about SD criteria next week and what was your NT criteria, what's your SD criteria. So we, I will talk about that next week to see then those ones what you need to report on and also what you evaluate your test on. So those ones are also needs to be covered. So then yeah, you do your report and then your closure test closure activities. So that's where you now have to. This is kind of the final phase of your testing also so you have all your test work your test material you analyze them and also you put them together for future works also and also some kind of lesson learned also and so that is that so okay on that note i think i will uh, focus i will stop here uh, on psychology of testing so because this is one of the questions I get as a tester how do I know I'm testing the right thing how do I know I am actually I've, I've got people come to me and say I'm, I've just got this new role but how do I know I'm doing the right thing uh, I can I'll be able to show to developer or to my team that yes I know what I am doing. So, uh, testing is, is challenging, I would say. It's intellectually is challenging. You, you need your creative mind. It's, you need to be extremely creative. So, because for you to design your test cases, you need to be creative with them also. So, and that's why it's very, very important to, to have that analytical skills and everything and also attention to 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 details so now there's some notion in testing that we need to um, talk about quickly which is uh, one so when you are testing do you test that there's a presence of defect or there's absence of defect so, so one thing that you can prove, you cannot actually say that I've tested this application and there is no defect. That's not the point of a testing. Or you can say, oh, this is the top quality. Yes, it's okay to say that. But you cannot say there's, there's no defect on it. You can only say, okay, I've tested this application and there are two or three defects are found but you cannot categorically say that there is no defect that's a fallacy that's the first principle of testing that testing shows the presence of a defect not their absence so it's very very important to know that that when you get a job and you can say yeah you don't actually say there's no bug or in this testing, I've tested it and I'm, I'm very sure there's no bug, but you can only report 
based on the number of bugs that you find. And so the second principle, exhaustive testing is impossible. You cannot actually say that I've been I've exhausted my test cases or I've covered every scenario or everything combination in all this world is covered. No. No, in in some cases, in the trivial cases, you can say so. Those are simple uh, applications. But in most cases, in the complex applications, you cannot you cannot actually say, oh, I've done excessive testing. But however, how can I actually say that I finished my testing? So we're going to cover those ones also. Even though I can say there's no excessive testing, but how do I close my testing? How do I know I finished my testing? So we're going to also cover that also. Uh, another principle is like when should we start testing? So testing should start as as soon as possible. How soon? As long as you have that requirement, as long as they gather they are gathering that requirement, testing should also start as that. Because in the process of gathering the requirement, if there's a bug in the requirement, it's easy to fix. Because quickly the person that is writing writing that requirement maybe has made some mistakes and you as a tester you are reading that requirement and you can be able to pinpoint that this it doesn't look right. Then what exactly would the person say do? Just backspace or delete. So delete that particular part and then you write it again. But for instance if you are not there and you you are hired when that application is already developed and also the test the developer did not actually see that error then they have to re redevelop the application again so it's kind of going to be expensive so that was said testing should, should start as early as possible what is also fourth principle is defect clustering it has been known that most defects also sometimes will cluster in a particular section or part of the application. Why is that? Because in some cases, some code, some part of the code, some part of the code. So what happens, some part of the code could be vulnerable, so I'll be say. Vulnerable, I'll say. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi, Obina. Obina, can you mute your mic? Can you mute your mic? Okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, different clustering. I said some part of the application could be kind of spaghetti, you know, spaghetti. I'll say <laughs> they are so error-prone, maybe because of the person that wrote this, um, um, the code, or it's because it's so complex in that area. So in that regard, it's kind of most bugs might, might be found in that area. So, and also, in it, I'll, I'll teach you some, that's one of those, um, there's other, one of the techniques that we call attack. So when you know that, if a cluster at a particular part of the application, you might need to attack that particular part first to be sure that, okay, that area that is error prone is addressed. And also, there's also like risk based also, you know, what are the area that kind of risks or the risky area also in terms of the uh, application or in terms of the complexity of the application, also the, uh, the part that is being used more in the application so you cannot focus on that area to be honest so and that uh, knowing that 
the, the defect can cluster in that area. So another one also, the uh, fifth principle, pesticide paradox. So this is very, very important, and this is what happens for even for new testers. So it's like, why did they call it a pesticide paradox? Is that? So for instance, you are using uh, your pesticides to to kill insects and bacteria, which is will not actually use. So, uh, in in a, I I studied an instance, like you have an application. You have an application that accepts evil number from one to ten. If you supply two, right, that's your first test, and that. And you now do you supply another four to say, okay, yeah, four is another evil number you want to do. You're not doing something new. Your first test, which is supplying two, and the second test, which is supplying four, they do the same thing. So that means you're not, in the second test, you're not actually testing. You're just wasting time. So because you're not going to find any new bug by reason of the second test. So this is one of those issues that some people will say I am they will, they will take almost like two months to test an application that other people will take only a few days because they are only retesting the same thing every time. So they are not doing a new type of testing. So so in that regard, you need to know what are the test cases that you need to do to uncover area that you've not tested so that you don't continue testing uh, using the same test case, even though they are kind of different. So there are different techniques I said we are going to um, cover maybe next week on how to be able to uh, not fall into this particular uh, issue. Um, principle six is it said testing is context dependent. You need to know what type of application that you are testing. I spoke about the risk approach. So it's a different scenario if you are testing a safety critical system or an e-commerce system or you are testing a toy or you are testing a financial application. So that intensity of the testing determines what type of application you are testing. So uh, you are testing, you are only testing for, um, a product by yourself. The same way you won't actually put more of seriousness attached to it. So it's based on the technique, um, context that you are testing. So and also the environment that you are using. So it's it's totally uh, context dependent. And So also the last principle, the last principle, no failure means the system is useful. That is big fallacy. So like we said in the first one, like I said, the presence of a bug is what you, you determine, but you cannot actually say there's absence of a bug. And the same, that ties back to, the, to this one now. So the fact that the application has not failed does not mean that it is useful or a guarantee that the system will meet the requirements. That does not. It's, it's not. So you can only try to prevent failure, but you cannot actually say that, okay, this system is useful because it has not failed. So it's, it's, it's a fallacy. So we, we cover some principles in testing to actually help you to know if I'm actually testing, what are the things that I should be at the back of my mind? What are the principles that we need to focus during testing? So I think that is that for now. So it's kind of kind of uh, like a quick intro into what testing should be like, how should we do testing? So next week, we're going to cover the practical part of the testing, having to do auto own writing our test cases and everything. So um, I'll say be 
online so that I can ask questions. So in that regard, so um, so I think that that's it for for today. So I know it's after a lot of things, so you might not remember all of them. I'll try to make the video available so so that you can listen in and to be honest, read this particular book also. It's it's FC. So do we have any question before we call it today? Any question? Okay. So if there's no question, so okay, one minute. Okay, so in the absence of any questions, so we meet next week, 8 uh, p.m. to 10 p.m., which my last testing. So, and all right, have a great week, I, I had. So I will see you next week. Bye.